I have news for you. That day that you decided to be a Muslim, the day that you decided to say La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, you entered the fold of Islam. And when you entered the fold of Islam, you fell under the umbrella of the Ummah. And when you became a member of the Ummah, you became a part of the body. So what you do has an effect on the Ummah. Brothers are walking around today telling me, listen, and please excuse me, I know we're sitting in the masjid, but I'm not here to give you Disney stories. We're either here to speak the hug, honestly, or let's just shut shop and go home, and let's just all sit down and watch TV. Today you walk around, and every single one of us has this disease. Every one of us has this disease. That, yeah, look, you know, alhamdulillah, I'm not the best Muslim, and yeah, maybe my Quran has shortcomings, and yeah, maybe my salah is not this, that, and the other, but it's all right. No, it's not all right, akhi. People think that, listen, you know what? If I don't want to pray, that's none of your business. It's between me and Allah. Have you ever heard this? That no one can judge me. Only God can judge me. Wow. Big round of applause for this brother. Hey. Only God can judge me. Well, duh, yes, only God can judge you. But unfortunately, brother, I have news for you. Your shortcomings has an effect on me, has an effect on my wife, has an effect on my children, and has an effect on the rest of the ummah. So it's not up to me to allow you to do your wrong and to do your haram and not stand before you, right? And give you clear warning that what you're doing is wrong and batil. The Prophet of Allah in the Sahih Hadith, وَالَّذِي nafsi biyadi, The Prophet of Allah takes an oath by Allah. He says, you either enjoin that which is good and you forbid that which is wrong. This is a responsibility upon everyone. This is not the responsibility of Muhammad Hablas. It's not the responsibility of the mashayikh. It's not the responsibility of the ulama. It's the responsibility of every person that has iman and tawheed in his heart to call to that which is good and forbid that which is wrong. Why, O Prophet of Allah? What if I don't want to do it? What if it's none of my business? What if I want to do my own thing? He says, you will do it. Or by Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will send down his punishment upon you. You will raise your hands and make dua, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not accept your prayers. Allah will not accept your prayers. My brothers and sisters, please, don't you see what's happening around you? Don't you understand that death is around the corner for every single one of you? Every one of you. Did you know this? Did you know death stares you in the face every single day? What are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your life? Look at what's, hap look at what's happening to us around the world. Look what's happening to you in your own country. Yet what are we doing about it? We are an ummah, we are one unit, we are not individuals. We don't have that luxury. You don't have the luxury of saying, brother, only God can judge me, leave me alone. No one, you know, you know that, look, it's none of your business. Let me do as I please. No, my brother, because what you do has an effect on me and what I do has an effect on you. So you're probably thinking, you know, yeah, Akhi, you know what, but what's your dalil, bro? That's unfair. What do you mean that whatever he does has an effect on me? Yes. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with the Muslims, he deals with them as an ummah. When the khairat and the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falls down, who does it fall down upon? It falls upon everyone. And when the punishment of Allah falls, who does it fall on? It falls upon everyone. This is Allah's system. You like it, you don't like it, it works, it gels. I don't know, hang on, it's not making sense. None of my business. This is how Allah works. When his rahmah falls, everyone feeds off it. And when the hadab and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the curse and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falls, everyone cops it. When Musa alayhi salatu was salam, when his people were going through a drought, and please, I'm sure you've heard the story before, I'm sure you've heard the hadith before, but wallahi, you know, I really want you to try and live it. Try to understand it. Put yourself in this position. You know, we, 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 we really have to break away from just, we sit and we read the hadith, you know, wallah, we become like deadbeats. Live, live the hadith, try to understand what is going on here. The Prophet of Allah, Musa alayhi salatu was salam, the only Prophet that had the luxury of speaking directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine the Prophet of Allah, his people were going through a state of drought, no water. You know what that means? That means everyone was suffering. No water, no food, no crops, the plants were dying, nothing was growing, animals were dying, nothing to drink, nothing to eat. Human beings were dying and suffering. Amongst them is a prophet. So the people came to Musa and said, Ya Musa, what's going on? 
I'll cut the long story short. So Musa and his people, they go to the desert. Musa raises his hands and he says, Oh Allah, you can see what's happening to my people. Ya Allah, we're begging, we're asking for rain. Naturally, when a prophet asks, what happens? Allah answers, yes or no? Musa asks for rain, they're waiting for the clouds to come in, nothing happened. You know, forgive me, these are my own interpretations. I'm making it clear, these are my own interpretations. These are the, th you know, I have this problem. Whenever I read, these thoughts go through my mind. I'm thinking, wow, imagine being a prophet at that moment. My people who already their iman is with the wind, going and coming, right? True? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again, Banu Banu Israel were the worst, yes? And imagine, imagine the pressure he was under. My people are turning to me, they're waiting for the response. I'm a prophet of Allah. Right? I have direct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, I clearly asked you for rain and nothing happens. Talk about heat under the collar. So Musa says, Ya Allah, what's happening? I asked for rain and no rain. Now listen to what Allah says. He says, Ya Musa, from amongst your people there is one sinner. One. How many sinners are in our towns? How many of our Muslims don't pray? How many of our sisters are still unscarved? How many of our elders still cannot read Fatiha properly? Ya Musa, from amongst your people is one sinner. And because of him and him alone, I have deprived the rain from falling. So you can come to me now and talk to me about justice and wisdom and is this fair all night long. Doesn't change the fact that Allah deprived rain upon a prophet, upon people, upon innocent women and children and animals and crops because of the actions of one man. One man! So Musa turns to his people. He says, oh, my people, amongst you is a sinner. Come out and make yourself known. You know, I always think about this story and I think, imagine being that man at that time. You know, Wallahi, with all respect to everyone, I already know without anyone, every person in this room is a sinner, including myself. Every one of you is a sinner, whether you like it or not, because the Prophet of Allah will never lie. Adam Every single human being is a sinner. But we have the luxury of hiding our sins. Sometimes we have the luxury of knowing, look, alhamdulillah, at least no one knows about it. It's in private. It's only between me. You know, no one knows. Imagine this man has now been addressed by a Prophet and now he comes to realize that because of my sin, because of my shortcoming that I thought no one knows about except me and Allah, now this man comes to realize that because of my shortcomings, all my people have been suffering because of my sin. Imagine that feeling. Honestly, how many of you feel like because of your sins, the Ummah is suffering? How many of us? So Musa says, make yourself known. Come forward. Imagine the embarrassment. So this man now realizes that, hey, I'm the guilty one. Unfortunately, something most of us are not prepared to do. So the man repents. He makes tawbah to Allah. But doesn't make himself known to Musa, alayhi so Musa waits for the man to come forward. No one comes forward. Musa goes back, asks Allah. And to his amazement, the rain comes and starts falling down. So yes, of course, Musa is happy the rain is there. But now he's baffled. It's ajib. He says, Ya Allah, please, some clarification. I asked for rain to begin with. You said there's a sinner. I asked for the sinner to come forward. No one came forward. I asked for rain the second time and now the rain comes down. What's going on? Now listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him. He says, Ya Musa, I deprived the rain from coming because of him and him alone. 
But that person, he turned back to me and he asked for my forgiveness. I accepted his tawbah. And now because of him and him alone, I've allowed the rain to fall down. So Musa is now interested. He says, Oh Allah, tell me who this man is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa, He says, Ya Musa, I didn't expose him when he was a sinner. What makes you think I'm going to expose him now that he's repented and turned back to me? You see, when you and I sit there, where, oh wow, mashallah, subhanallah, what a lovely story. The rain came down and everything worked out at the end and happily ever, you know, and, and, and you know, everyone lived happily ever after. Yeah, and thanks for coming. You know what's the amazing part of this story? It's not the fact that Allah allowed the rain to come. You know what I find is interesting? What I find interesting is this man that was man enough to admit, was man enough to stand up and say, hey, I am in the wrong. He was man enough to acknowledge the fact that his shortcomings made his people suffer. And he was man enough to acknowledge it. And he was man enough to turn back to Allah. He was man enough to ask Allah Azza wa for forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted him. A quality that most of us fail in. Where are those that are pre where are those that are prepared to stand up and say, hey, you know what's happening around the world? It's because of people like me. It's because of my shortcomings. It's because of my lack of deen. It's because of my sins at night. It's because of my long tongue that I can't keep shut. It's because of my eyes that I can't keep down. It's because of my actions. No. We point the finger at anyone and everyone except myself. <laughs> 